Welcome back to another beer review. This is by North Jetty Brewing Company. They are located in CB, Washington. That is in the southwest corner of the state on the coast. This is Ledbetter Red. It's a Scottish style ale. North Jetty Brewing has been around since 2012 and their tap room opened in 2014. I'm not sure when this beer came out, but it must be a somewhat recent beer since the brewery is not that old. Ledbetter Red, it's a Scottish style ale. It says here on the side, named for Ledbetter State Park at the tip of the Long Beach Peninsula. Ledbetter Red is a malt driven beer with a subtle hot bitterness that is easy drinking. That's what I was reading right there in the corner. There is a short story here on the website. It says this is a Scottish export ale. A delicate blend of roasted and caramel malts creates a soft palate feel with just enough hops to create balance. Ledbetter Red Scottish is lighter than a typical Scottish style ale, which lends to its drinkability and popularity. This beer is available all year round, it is not seasonal. This bottle cost me $4. The only subtle hints they give to what's in it is they say uh, roasted and caramel malt space malt to be either Pilsner or Turo. Depending on which of those they used, I could get some sweetness and toasted and maybe a little bread cracker notes from a Pilsner malt, or if it's Turo, it's one of the bread cracker dough flavors. Roasted malt is just that. It gives roasted flavors, sometimes a little bit of coffee notes to it. Caramel malts, there's a number of them. There's several crystal malts that can do that. There's a Caramunic. For the caramel flavor, that could be a variety of malts. It could be something such as a crystal 40, 60, 80 or higher, or a Caramunic. Caramel malts, depending on which one they used in it, can also give toffee, caramel, some sweetness, and some of them even give an intense malty flavor, such as caramel. No idea what the hops are. It could be absolutely anything. I am anticipating this being malt forward, like they're saying. Some nutty, bready flavors in it, a little bit roasted, along with toffee and caramel. This should be either medium or a full body beer. In order to get the body style I described, it's usually mash, which means the grains are steeped at a warmer temperature in the 150 Fahrenheit range. This is 4.8% alcohol, 23 IBU. This is an ale, as the name it says in the name, so that means it's made with a top fermenting yeast. Uh, it's quicker than a lager, and usually has more rich malt flavors. Scottish reds tend to have a medium to deep reddish copper color to them. They are generally malt forward, uh, pretty noticeable usually, with a combination of caramel, toffee, and some sweetness. It should not be hoppy at all, that would be wrong for the style. Most every uh, Scottish I've had is also clear. Uh, being a little cloudy wouldn't be wrong, but it's just not normal. It is a medium red or deep copper, depending on your perspective. Very thin head, it died down rapidly. There wasn't very much to begin with. It may be a little hard to notice, but it is clarified. The deep red copper tint to it makes it a little hard to see. There are no floating particles in it, no sediment on the bottom. The clarity comes from a combination, most likely, of kettle findings, Cold crash in the fermenter when it's done fermenting, lowers the temperature, to medium to high flocculating yeast. Carbonation in this is very light. You don't really even see any bubbles coming up, but then again, it's a little too hazy to see that. Really nice appearance. I really like that. Soft caramel, a little bit of candy notes, some sweetness as well out of the nose. It's softener strain just gently tickling my nose. While the scents are very few, they're still very nice and just such a tease on my nose. It opens up and gives me a light, soft coating all over my mouth. Definitely malt forward, but not very strong. A Vienna malt, not a Munich, which is kind of what I would have expected. The flavors stick around for a short amount of time and slowly dissipate. 
This tastes light to medium body. A good hop nibbling to it. They the malt and the hops complement each other very nice. And nibbling's all throughout the bottom of my mouth. There are some slight caramel tones in there, but they're very gentle. And those come after the malty and the hop nibbling tones. This is not a bitter beer at all. Caramel malts, depending on which one they use, as I mentioned before, they could give some toffee, caramel, dark fruit, burnt sugar, raisin, plum, things like that. I get a little bit of a caramel, possibly even toffee in there. I don't get any dark fruit notes. This would make me think it's more like a crystal 60 or so, maybe even a 40. Roasted malt in here, which surprised me a little bit. I don't get any of those flavors to it. No roasted, no toasty yet. I'm not getting any bread cracker notes, no candy, no citrus, tangy. I don't get any fruity notes out of any caramel malt. I continuously get swept back and forth in my entire mouth with that nice, soft, but noticeable malty backbone with that hop nibbling. They both, both still complement each other followed by that caramel. I'm not getting any flavors that taste like they come from the yeast. It's not thick and chewy, but it's not water either. I don't think this is a complex beer at all, but it just has enough flavors to make me think, yeah, this tastes like, tastes like a Scottish red ale. Still coats my mouth, top and bottom, sweeping back and forth repeatedly with a soft but noticeable malt flavor, followed by that complimentary hop nibbling that's so nice, they work together very well. I still get some light caramel notes out of it. They're a little softer now, but I can still tell them that they're there. There's still a slight sweetness to this. It tastes light to medium body. I still don't get any bread, cracker, dough, no toasted notes. I still do get those roasted flavors they described, those never showed up. No candy notes in here at all. No fruit that I can tell. This is not a hoppy beer at all. It just has a hop nibbling. A handful of flavors come at me and they're all nice and noticeable but restrained. As, as before, the flavors stick around a short amount of time and slowly dissipate. Nothing really lingers. The mouthfeel is still somewhat thick, not really chewy, not watery. It's right between the two. Somewhat complex recipe. There's several malts in here, I'm sure. Between the bottle and the glass, I can tell the difference. They taste the same to me. The bottle has not been skunked. There's no infections like diacetyl, fused alcohols, astringency, acetone, paint thinner, nail polish, DMS, there are no wet paper flavors, band-aids. Will I buy this again? I don't love it, but I like it. I think it's well done, has a good flavor profile to it, although I wish them were stronger. Will I recommend it? Yes, I will recommend it. I think if you like Scottish style ales, you would like this. It's not the best example of one, but it's still pretty good. I wish the malt profile was a little more forward. It had more malt flavor. It was a little more chewy and had some more sweetness to it. Basically, I wish the flavors were a little more pronounced. I am pleased with it. Uh, it didn't quite meet my expectations, but I still think they did a good job with it. Average, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's better than below average. North Jetty Brewing out of CV Washington. This is Leadbetter Red. It's a Scottish style ale. If you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, or questions about beer, send me a message. That's all for this beer review. Cheers. They are on the southwest. They are located in CV Washington, which is uh, it's not really caramel malt, but it, no, that doesn't make any sense. Let's just stop right there. I forgot to smell the damn thing. Oh, I totally skipped that part. Fuck. 
Six tried just a little while to tease me, and then just runs off. It's like a chick in a bar in that sense, I guess. That's all of it. Ah. <sighs>